Korean-American artist Timothy Lee was born in Seoul, South Korea. He grew up in New York City. Immersed in two cultures and feeling rejected by both, Lee suffered from anxiety and panic attacks throughout his childhood. Today, he channels the pain of that period into a stark creative process that is heavily influenced by his studies in neuroscience and cytohistology. His experience as an outsider in two very different worlds inspired him to create artwork that reflects on the meaning of identity and the pressure of finding acceptance. I don't want people to feel my pain. You know, that's not my goal of my art. But I do want them to, even for a split second, engage in my reality. Well, my name is Timothy Hensu Lee. I'm a watercolor artist. I studied neuroscience at Wesleyan University. And so, you know, I thought I was going to be a doctor. And then my last year of college, I realized, oh, man, everything I want to do is, like, on the paper in the studio. My years of training in the sciences have definitely influenced the works that I produce. You know, my works are inspired by a lot of things, but for the most part, they're inspired by my identity, my dual identity, both as a Korean American, but as someone who has suffered from panic attacks and anxieties since my childhood. I can never get over my anxiety. I experience it on a daily basis, but rather my artwork has finally allowed me to find a successful outlet to manage it. I'm able to transform it into a generative process rather than having it, you know, scoop out parts of me, if you know what I mean. And at the root of it all, I can say my work is about identity, and it is. So is every artist's work. But it's about my experiences and how they've shaped how I perceive the world. Because, you know, because of the panic and anxiety that I grew up with, it's not as black and white as you know, other people. For example, there will be situations where, for unknown reasons, I'll start to just feel very uncomfortable, very angsty. Well, the first serious project I undertook uh, my last year of college was a series of watercolor eyes on folded paper. And it was about 60, 70 pieces of Bristol. They were crumpled up, stepped on and dirtied, and they were scattered throughout the floor. And it was an installation called Cook Eyes. That really manifested from my frustrations of being a Korean American. Basically, you know, as I call it, being like a ghost between two cultures never belonging. I was born in Seoul, but I came here when I was five with my family. And so when you come here that young, the environment you grew up with is the environment you associate yourself with. So, you know, I thought I was American. You know, there were social cues that reminded me from time to time that you know, no matter how much I felt like an American, some people didn't see me as, you know, so they would be like, where are you from? You know, that's like the most obvious one. And I'll say like New York, and they'll be like, where are you really from? And then I go back to Korea for the first time. But the moment I open my mouth, the Koreans know, like, I'm not from around here. Like, where are you from? You know, when did you leave Korea? Because they can already hear it from my voice that I didn't grow up speaking the language they did. So, you know, especially Asian Americans in America, a lot of people do have stereotypical assumptions of what they can and cannot do. You 
you know, I took pictures of eyes from the Asian American community around me and drew them onto these sheets of paper that were very white. I wanted to play around with the whiteness of the paper and what that represented in this piece. And after I painted all these delicate eyes that were, had very intense gazes, uh, I made all of my subjects look directly into the camera so that when I drew them, it would look like they're all staring at you. People walk around to see the installation and will accidentally step on them. And the first few times that happened, people were like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I stepped on your piece, but that's exactly what I want. Watercolor I love because it's so unforgiving. It captures everything, every uncertainty, every hesitation. You know, a mark of watercolor, unlike paint, oil paint or acrylic paint, where if you make a mistake, you could paint over it or you know, scrape it off. You can't do that. Once you put watercolor on paper, it's there. You try so hard not to make a mistake, but it is essential for, you know, for something else to come out of it. You know, it's like the story of the phoenix where, you know, it has to burn for it to be reborn. You know, I feel like I burn myself every time I paint. I mean, you know, that's how I feel like. That's it for this week. Join the conversation with us on social media. We are CCTV America on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. All of tonight's interviews can be found online at cctv-america.com. And let us know what you'd like us to take full frame next. Email us at fullframe at cctv-america.com. Until then, I'm Mike Walter in Los Angeles. We'll see you next time.